anti-Semitic culture war flourishes. Despite long-term educational outreach efforts from Holocaust survivors around the world, recently, Second Life's virtual synagogue was defaced with a swastika. Deniers continue to spread their agenda amid the dwindling survivor population. Fanny Starr bravely shares the details of her life with us so we can record, so we can be reminded, and so we can be enlightened and hear firsthand what really happened. Being able to film this preserves as a document of time an undeniable record of the past from the first-hand experience of someone who survived it. We are grateful to be able to be enlightened by the past so that we can be sure to never let humanity fall to such deprivation. Nazi atrocities brought horror to all humankind, and our being able to listen and learn from Fanny Starr means that we have a chance to never let this happen again, and crimes against each other can abate. For more than 30 years, survivor Fanny Starr has shared the details of her imprisonment at Lot's Ghetto, whose residents were forced to work in slave labor in factories that manufactured uniforms, munitions, and other supplies for the Nazis. In 1944, the Lot's Ghetto was liquidated, and its remaining residents were shipped to Auschwitz. Fanny later learned that she was one of only a thousand survivors of the ghetto whose residents once totaled 150,000. Then on to Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen, Ravensbrück, and others. After more than 30 years of public appearances, co-hosting a lecture series in Second Life has enabled Fanny Starr to share her experiences with the online community's 18 million members. Through the legacy of her recollections and the brave recollection of others, one can attempt to identify the faith that humanity can learn from its mistake. Our ability to film today's talk also means that we can reach many more people and use Second Life as a true platform for knowledge dissemination. Our filming, a machinima, of Fanny Starr's words and experiences that can be appreciated by many means there is hope that millions of people will be brought to understanding what really happened not so long ago. Second Life technology can reach a broad base of people, something a real-life classroom cannot achieve, yet we are in an intimate setting here and respectful of such. You have been through so much and survived so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Fanny Starr. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's wonderful to see you. You have been through so much and have survived so much. I have a, a question, and I'd like yeah. to ask you, if you could travel the world all over and give one message regardless of country, religion, race, or ethnicity, what would that be? Peace on earth, no more wars. We had it not, no destruction of humanity because what's going on now in Iraq and the other countries, just innocent people getting distracted. And after that, we are the victims, Israel, like the other day, just with blue sky, just start throwing bombs and everything else. So once and for all, let's stop that animosity against humanity. That's so important. That's, that is such an important message because we as humans are hurt so much by the destruction we bring to each other. Mm -hmm. You certainly have witnessed uh, a great deal. And now I'd like to ask you a question um, that concerns President Roosevelt. How did you feel about President Roosevelt's response to the Holocaust during World War II? I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I was, from the beginning, I just didn't know I was distracted. After that, when my husband took over, you know, in the politics, 
area. He said that Roosevelt could do more, not let that catastrophe, because mm -hmm. that time he had a secretary of Hall. He was an anti-Semite. People came mm. like Kente, the, what the name of the artist, the Kente, yeah. oh, Amy, I forgot, <laughs> after so many years. And he came and pleaded with Hall, and Hall told them to wait. He waited for hours and hours and hours, and he ignored them. After Roosevelt saw the catastrophic thing, we could prevent it. Definitely we could. He saw she could bombard it. All the rail trains, what people were shifted to one place to the other. All the many, many things they could do it, and they just ignored it. They didn't do it. I don't know why. He was a little bit anti saber I would say it. <laughs> Eddie I, Eddie I, you know, I was yeah. talking about uh, Eddie Kenter. He was sitting over there. He was pleading. Metal. You could it do more. Yeah, it could have been so different. Been. Yeah. He was ignored. I cannot <laughs> remember everything. I tell you, so many years passed. You know, one act by one, we say one act by one person can change so much. That certainly was um, a critical, critical moment that he, that he did not step up to, uh, to help. Uh, yeah. Pope Pius the Twelfth yeah. and, and the Catholic Church are now pushing to uh, make him a saint. Yeah. Could we have Shame some? on them. Shame on them. They shouldn't. He had bloody hands. He was the, in the Hitler Jugend. And he tried to justify that he was guilty. All the Jug uh, Hitler Jugend went and broke in stars in Germany. They just crystallized the all Hitler Jugend. And he would say uh, he's guilty. I blamed Rome just because they shouldn't make him a big pope. I feel, I love the pope what passed away. He had a heart. He was too a victim of circumstances like I was. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, when my husband was in a one camp, they called Posen, and they were brought in all the priests, you know, the all intellectual priests. And they were just tortured like we. And my husband, I asked my husband where they disappeared. He said, one night they just, everybody was gone from the barracks. We didn't know where <gasps> they are. 